Welcome to the Run 2 question and answer session for the joint EMQN a UK NECROS scheme ensuring accurate classification of BRCA variants. Myself, Emma Howard, together with my colleagues Peter Logan and Ian Berry, will be providing responses for the questions submitted by various laboratories. Next slide, please. So the agenda today will cover the general questions submitted, the ACMG related questions, and the variant specific questions. Next slide, please. So the first question is a general question, and it states, in the report, you state for many variants, the correct classification is, that is surely dependent on the information available to each participant. If a laboratory has, for example, unpublished functional data or extensive family information, then they will use that evidence and possibly arrive at a different conclusion than the scheme organiser. The scheme organiser can really only state that with the evidence available to them, they have concluded with a certain class. The class is not necessarily correct. Next slide, please. And our response to that general question is, correct classification, we would agree that where additional information is available, that any group should make the wider community aware of the additional information which would then be shared where appropriate through the scheme report with the rest of the scheme participants. The second point, we agree that the use of correct classification was not an appropriate term, as other evidence may be available to laboratories which may influence the variant classification. And in future, we should state that the interpretation of the variant is based on the guidelines as stated and the evidence available at time of assessment. And lastly, we would strongly recommend that, where possible, all laboratories endeavour to freely share all additional evidence they may have affecting the classification of a variant for the benefit of other patients worldwide. Next slide, please. So turning now to the ACMG-related questions. Next slide, please. This question relates to BRCA specific guidelines. I just saw your extended BRCA variant summary report, impressive. My major comment is that you apply ACMG rules to a gene that has ClinVar accepted gene specific rules developed by the BRCA expert committee, which happens to include me. Applying ACMG rules is therefore of limited use. We are in the process of translating the BRCA rules into ACMG gene specific rules. So I am wondering why you have chosen to stick to rules that are too general to apply where gene-specific rules are available. Next slide, please. The scheme, so our response as assessors is the scheme was based on the ACMG guidelines as a published standard available at the time of the run to variant assessment. And although many groups are offering guidance on classification and or developing independent guidelines for the classification of variants within gene or phenotype specialties, such as Enigma and the Climbar, and some of the others are listed in the brackets on our slide, these guidelines will be of great value once published in a peer-reviewed journal or peer-reviewed online resource within the specialty. Therefore, Run3 should be based on the available peer-reviewed variant guidance published at the time of assessment and should incorporate additional information from online expert panel bodies when published. And the links can be found in the slide below. Next slide, please. I now turn to the question um, around the use of PS4 in BRCA. So the use of PS4, the scheme organiser has a very liberal use of PS4 for a disease such as breast cancer, which is such a common phenotype. Most other diagnostic labs are more conservative in their use and would require much larger numbers to satisfy this point for BRCA variants. Next slide, please. So our response um, for the use of PS4 in BRCA is this is a valid point and worthy of further discussion within the specialist expert groups addressing variant classification in these genes. More stringent guidance for PS4 has been published within other common diseases with incomplete adult penetrance. An example of this is the ACMG MYH7 guidelines and the reference for that can be found on the slide here. It is anticipated that more stringent guidance will emerge for BRCA1 and BRCA2 in due course and the expert panel consider it reasonable practice for laboratories to apply more stringent standards for the use of PS4 in BRCA1 and BRCA2 under their own locally agreed frameworks. Next slide, please. I now hand over to my colleague, Peter Logan, who will review the specific variant questions. Thank you. Yes. 
Specific variant questions, Peter Logan. First question we received uh, was on the bracket one, junction fragment information supplied by the scheme showed that the duplication above was in tandem and was predicted to cause an out of frame BRAGA1 protein product. Therefore, PVS1 could be applied to this variant along with PM2 as the variant could not be identified on EXAC, NOMAD AD or in published evidence. Lack of this information in the scenario may have led to uncertainty for participants, resulting in the class three classification. We were unable to find supportive literature, hence the class three call. We are very concerned that we had this one incorrect given that the result would have affected management in a patient. A further comment was received. Use of PM2. In the video, this criteria was used in the classification of a large duplication. This is clearly described in the ACMG guidelines as not appropriate. One would not expect to find this type of variant in a large frequency database. I would like to see how the junction fragment information supplied by the scheme was presented in the GTAC tool. When I log in now, all sample info is inaccessible. Here is the summary of the information that was used by the assessors to class the variant. Not on NOMAD, PM2. Evidence favoring polymorphism, not applicable. Other ev evidence, duplication of exons 13 and 14, out of frame duplication, PVS1. PM2, PVS1 prediction class four. In response, the assessors have clarified that the information supplied to all participants as part of the assessment scheme did not include the breakpoint data that was supplied to the assessors. Please see the following slide. We would agree that reporting this variant as of uncertain significance would be acceptable without the supplementary evidence which identified this duplication as a tandem event. The use of PM2 for large rearrangements would be considered valid as a search using the genomic coordinates of a variant can identify large rearrangements in EXAC and NOMAD. Other online variant databases are available, such as Decipher, DGV, and Ensemble, uh, links below, which can be queried for larger rearrangements. Below is the evidence that was applied, uh, supplied to the assessors. So this is uh, a diagram of the junction reads connecting BRCA1, intron 12 and 14. With the first part of the junction read aligning BRCA1, intron 12, and the second part of the junction read aligning BRCA1, intron 14, showing below that this was indeed, in this patient, a tandem duplication. A further query was received uh, for BRCA2, C.4107, T. G, P. Serine 1369 Serine. In Richards et al. 2015, the discussion point for use of BP7 synonymous variants, pages 14 and 15 of the publication, in the absence of any pathogenic evidence for a specific variant, it is suggested that, if supported by computational evidence, BP4, one can classify novel synonymous variants as likely benign. Also in the discussion for use of PM2 on page 10 of the publication, it is stated that many benign variants are private, unique to individuals or families, however, and therefore absence in a race matched population is not considered sufficient or even strong evidence for pathogenicity. The comment came in, in round one, we have an overcautious class three classification, whilst in round two, we have a class two classification. In this case, a difference of plus minus one did not affect recommendation to treat. We report it as class three. In silico, computational programs don't provide any evidence for synonymous changes. I'm therefore assuming that BP4 was used due to low nucleotide and residue conservation. Is this correct? 
Our summary evidence, the evidence favoring pathogenic variant, no evidence was found on mutation or local specific databases, no publication evidence. The evidence failing, favoring polymorphism, no evidence was found on mutation or local specific databases, no published evidence. Synonymous change, BP7, no evidence for a significant splicing effect in silico, BP4. In other evidence, PMD was not applied based on clinical judgment. So BP4 and BP7 were applied with a prediction of class two. Next slide, please. In response to the query, the query is correct. BP4 was used due to lack of significant change in the in silico splice prediction tools and assessment of base conservation. The point raised regarding population match controls is valid. The European population is well represented in NOMAD, making the assessment more reliable for Western laboratories. In the future, as this is a global facing scheme, we should specify the ethnic group of the patient to aid laboratories in their assessment returns. The use of BP4 and BP7 as valid evidence for this variant was a consensus decision made by the assessors. Next slide, please. There was a further query raised on the BRCA1 C.4186 minus 1 G to T. We missed the published evidence on possible alternative splicing, splicing provided by the Ahoya et al, where this group cites the functional study of Colombo describing the NAG NAG effect. As we were unable to retrieve both these publications using our above mentioned sources, could you please recommend additional non-commercial sources where important publications such as those listed above are listed and linked to variants? Next slide, please. The summary evidence that we had used did rely on uh, the publications, database citations, HGMD, describing this is a pathogenic change and absent from controls. Bioinformatics splicing tools predict that splice acceptor abolished, but creates a new acceptor, NAG, NAG splicing. And Enigma produces an in-frame transcript, predicting class three, as per Hoya et al. Evidence favoring polymorphism was not applicable. Other evidence not applicable. So in this case, we used PM2 and PM4, prediction class three. Next slide, please. The query raised was a valid point, as not all individuals laboratories would have the financial resources to buy access to papers, use this evidence within the scheme. However, the gathering of published evidence is critical to any diagnostic service. The assessor suggests that where possible, the author of the reference paper should be contacted to share a copy of their paper, as this is often provided at no cost. Free to access bioinformatics by tools predict an in-frame transcript, which was a significant factor finding for this variant. BRCA1 C.4986 plus 4A to T. The query was received. This variant is considered as a finder mutation in the Czech and Slovakian population, according to several literature source sources. And splicing effects have also been described in the same conserved nucleotide position. The variant is present in ClinVar as both likely pathogenic and pathogenic. We would like to understand whether the variant was classed as likely pathogenic due to discrepancies in the evaluation by the community, ClinVar, or the lack of true functional assessment. Here's the worked examples summary. Evidence favoring pathogenic variant Databases, citations, all likely pathogenic. Bioinformatics splicing tools give strong deleterious splicing prediction from all algorithms. Nucleotides and neighboring nucleotides highly conserved and a clear hotspot for reported splicing mutations. Other evidence, different variants affecting this nucleotide have been observed in individuals with breast or ovarian cancer. C.4986 plus 4A to G has been shown experimentally 
to create an aberrant transcript by incorporating 65 intronic bases immediately following X115. And this results in a stop codon at residue 1676. PM2, PP3, PP5, PS4 at a moderate level can be applied. Prediction, class four. This variant was assessed as class four, likely pathogenic, due to the lack of a strong ACMG criterion, which is required to elevate any variant to class five. Examples of such evidence would include sufficient segregation evidence, PP1 at a strong level, using the guidance laid down in Jarvik and Browning. Case control studies showing a clear enrichment of the variant in cases, BS4, or functional studies, for example, RNA, proving a deleterious effect at time of assessment, BS3. ClinFAR classifications are a useful source of evidence but do not fulfill any ACMG criteria in themselves. They should only be used in conjunction with independent supporting evidence to class a variant. I will now pass the meeting on to Ian Berry, who will continue for the remainder of the presentation. Firstly, bracket 2 C.45998 to C, lysine 1533 to asparagine. Uh, so the query reads, this variant is described as apparently private East Asian variant, 24 out of 18,864 alleles in NOMAD. BS1 was not used because it has only been seen in one population and this could indicate a founder. The ACMG guidelines were developed for rare disease in which founder variants would not necessarily be applicable. However, we know that in breast cancer, founder variants do exist in certain populations or subsets of population, hence the caution. The variant is not extensively published. Chow 2016 reported it as a variant of uncertain significance. It, is, it was detected in one case and one control in Souter et al. 2004 and does not appear obviously over prevalent in case control studies. It is listed nine times in ClinVar with a roughly even spread of likely benign and VUS entries. The residue is extremely poorly conserved and all in silico algorithms supported benign interpretation with no predicted splicing effect, therefore BP, BP4. We reported this variant as a class two. We deemed a carry frequency of 1 in 392 East Asian individuals in NOMAD too high for the variant to be disease causative and applied BS1 along with BP4 to make the variant class 2. So as you can see here from the summary evidence from the scheme, the expert panel deemed that um, the, the only ACMG criterion to be applied here was BP4, um, the prediction of uh, a benign effect using in silico tools. Um, in this case, the data from NOMAD wasn't used to apply BS1, as you can see here, the 24 out of 18,864 alleles in NOMAD. So in response to the query, the expert assessors considered that valid points were raised by this laboratory and that in a well-studied population, one in 392 does indeed appear to be too common to be a pathogenic BRCA2 variant. However, we did feel that some caution is warranted over reduced penetrance and founder effects, both of which have been reported in BRCA2, and that in the absence of a convincing case control study for the variant, the expert panel applied a cautious approach, as is suggested, in fact, in the original ACMG guideline paper in 2015 for variants that are represented in only a single ethnic control population. Uh, ultimately, we felt that the decision was dependent upon local practice uh, and how heavily one's lab weights in, uh, individual control population studies from, for example, NOMAD, and we felt that ACMG class 2 is entirely defensible. Moving on to the next variant, BRCA2 C.8437 to 8439 DEL. This is an in frame deletion of glycine at residue 2813. In the video, you summarise that the criteria for classifying the variant was PM2, absence in controls, PM4, protein length change as a result of an in frame deletion, and PS4, prevalence of the variant in affected individuals increased compared with controls. When we select these evidences using the variant interpretation tools provided by the University of Maryland, Intervar or Varsome, the variant is classified as likely pathogenic, class 4. Additionally, in our interpretation, we select the evidence PM1, as this change is located in a mutational hotspot. The combination of these evidences will classify this variant as pathogenic, class 5, changing the treatment recommendations. 
as you can see here, the evidence that was in fact used by the expert panel was PM4, the presence of an in-frame um, insertion or deletion, changing the uh, number of amino acids in the protein, PM2, absence from NOMAD, uh, and not actually PS4 at strong level, but PS4 at supporting level, because in this case, the variant had only been seen in two Korean patients um, in the Choi et al. paper. Uh, and here we applied PS4 at a quite conservative supporting level due to the uh, lack of definitive evidence that the two patients were actually different individuals, uh, leading us to two moderate and one supporting pieces of evidence in ACMG, leading to a class three. So in summary, uh, and in response to the query from the laboratory, the assessors considered there to only be sufficient evidence for the use of PS4 at supporting level, not at strong level from the published evidence. The assessment tools used online, in this case, for example, the University of Maryland one, may not allow the use of different weights for each criteria at supporting moderate or strong level, uh, and therefore the output from these tools may not be accurate in this case. Two moderate and one supporting pieces of ACMG evidence gives a class three variant of uncertain significance. The assessors also considered the use of PM1 was not applicable in this case. This is the criterion for mutation hotspot um, with absent benign variation. Uh, it was not applicable as many variants of no known clinical significance are found even within the classic functional domains of the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes. Uh, you can see an example here from the NOMAD data set. Um, the, uh, the, the second bottom track here showing the ClinVar pathogenic and likely pathogenic variants. So you can see that there are several regions where there are significant hotspots for missense variation. But in all these regions, the lower track here in the red box shows NOMAD missense variation. And you can see throughout the entire gene, uh, the, the NOMAD population is replete with missense variation, including the regions in which there are significant numbers of pathogenic missenses. So PM1 in this case is not applicable at all uh, within these genes. Finally, the assessors also considered that within most clinical settings, for example, ACMG, ACGS, and IARC, it's usual practice to treat class four and five variants as being clinically actionable uh, and confirming a likely diagnosis in the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes, and therefore a variance of classification between class four and class five, um, contrary to uh, what was suggested in the query here, would not alter patient treatment. So moving on to BRCA2 C.9649-6 dupe. Uh, the query reads, evidence BP7 was used, though it should be used for synonymous silent variants in the coding region, according to ACMG guidelines. Is this right? You can see in this case here, the evidence used by the expert assessors was BP4 and BP7. This is um, absence of a predicted uh, computational effect, BP4, and a synonymous or silent variant for which splicing prediction algorithms predict no impact, BP7. So in response to the query, the expert assessors consider that it's common practice to allow the use of BP4 and BP7 in intronic regions with low nucleotide conservation, where there is a lack of evidence to support any change or effect on splicing from the bioinformatic tools available or in the published press. This approach is in fact supported within the original guidance paper, Richard et al. 2015, uh, which suggests that it's appropriate to apply ACMG class two for synonymous and non-coding variants where there is no splicing prediction. And the consensus of the expert panel was that this application is valid in this case. Um, for a laboratory only applying BP4 in this specific scenario, this will lead to all rare variants of this type, i.e. synonymous and non-coding variants with no splicing prediction, to be classed as class three variant of uncertain significance. And this will generate an extremely high burden of such variants, particularly on reports focusing on whole genome sequencing and or a large number of genes. Moving on to the final variant, this uh, complex ins uh, DEL insertion in bracket two, 10095 DELINS GAATTATATCT. The query reads, uh, the used population frequencies of NOMAD are a combination of two entries, RS758307938 and RS7308815599. However, in my opinion, it should not be assumed that both alterations are linked. What is your opinion about this? In addition, BP4 is erroneously mentioned as evidence in the report for this variant, although it makes no sense in this context, but not in the video. 
So this is the slide from the worked example summary indicating that the evidence applied was uh, BP6, which in this case is reputable source reporting the variant as benign, BS1, the allele frequency being greater than expected for the disorder, and BP4, computational evidence suggesting no impact and a benign variant leading to a class 2 classification. In response to the query, um, the expert panel considered that the two variants that are reported in NOMAD can actually be seen in the direct read level data from the NOMAD browser to be in CIS in the vast majority of patients. Uh, for example, you can see here two different uh, examples taken from the NOMAD website of a heterozygous exome and a heterozygous genome where both of the, uh, of the copy number insertion variants are present shown by the red arrows. So uh, combining these together will give you an HGVS nomenclature of C.10095 Delins GAA TT AT AT CT, uh, which was the variant posed in the question. Um, so the expert panel considered that the evidence that's available within the Nomad browser is conclusive that the vast majority of patients or of individuals in which these two variants are reported, they are in fact in cis on the same allele. Uh, and we can see that the BP4 in the slide presented was an error. So that ends the specific uh, variant output for this scheme. Um, we'd like to thank you all for participation and we hope to see you again for run three.